Λοιπόν, καλησπέρα ή καλημέρα όπως το θέλετε όταν βλέπετε το βίντεό μας. Είναι άλλο ένα βίντεο από την εκπομπή μας, από το podcast ή videocast ε, Μυρωδιά της Πυριάρας και αυτή τη φορά έχουμε την τιμή και τη χαρά να έχουμε μαζί μας έναν παίχτη πάρα πολύ γνωστό στα ελληνικά γήπεδα, πρώην παίχτη πλέον, ο οποίος έχει περάσει από Παπάγου, από Πανιόνιο, ο Λίμπια Λάρισας έχει κάνει μια τριετία, είναι ο Στέφενα Ρικμπάμπου, ο οποίος υπήρξε βεβαίως και διεθνής με την Εθνική Γερμανίας. Μιχάλη, καλημέρα. Καλημέρα και από μένα. Ε, όντως έχουμε έναν ε, ξένο πρώην παίχτη, νυν κόουτς, ο οποίος μόνο ξένος δεν είναι, είναι πολύ γνωστό στα μέρη μας. Έκανε 7 χρόνια, ξέχασε να πεις το Μαρούσι που έδωσε την καριέρα του και τη Δάφνη. Ε, ε. Και βέβαια, στέλεχος ναι με την Εθνική Γερμανία, όπως είπες. Ε, καλημέρα κύριε Ικμπάμπου. Καλημέρα Στέφανη. Καλημέρα, καλημέρα. How are you? I'm doing fine. Everything good. Okay. Thank you for the acceptance of our invitation. Excuse me one second. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Everything's good. Okay. Okay. I hope you can cut that out. No problem, no problem. Okay, okay. good. So, I want to start with the question, uh, what are you doing basketball-wise? these days, this year? Are you in a bench? Are you a coach anywhere? Where have you been? Yes, uh, I'm coaching right now. Since uh, last season, I came to uh, Hungary, to Budapest, and I'm uh, working in the uh, Vashash Basketball Academy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the situation is here that we have one uh, senior team that is playing in the second division with uh, ambitions in the next years to move up. I'm uh, like an uh, associate head coach, assistant coach in the men's team, but my main focus is on uh, developing juniors. I'm the head coach of uh, under 18 and under 20 uh, teams here. Okay, I think they have a very good water polo team, Vasas. Yes, yes, is yes. I mean, okay. uh, especially in Hungary, you know, like a uh, water polo. I think it's a very uh, yeah, known sport. Their, their, national, their national sport, yes, yes. So, we would like to begin with your time in Greece. You have spent, if I'm not wrong, six or seven years, six or seven seasons yes. in Greece. Like we said, Papagou, Panionios, Daphne, these are teams in Athens. Pa Panionios is my, especially my uh, personal favorite because I am from Nea Smyrni. Okay. Nice. So uh, this team is very near my house. Tell me, uh, why did you come in Greece in the first place? Who told you about Greece? Who told you about your first team? I think it's Papago your first team. Right? Yes, my first team. My first team was Papago, and uh, obviously uh, back then, it's uh, yeah more than 20 years ago. We didn't have so much information uh, as you have now. If you would uh, go somewhere. But uh, I was in a pretty good situation in Berlin. I had my playing time. We won uh, two championships, but uh, I felt like uh, I want to go somewhere else, want to have a new experience. And I didn't know a lot about uh, Greece. I didn't know a lot about Papago, but uh, I took the step. And uh, of course it was, uh, if I look now, 20 years after, it was a big step uh, going from a uh, very well organized Uh, Berlin team, then to Papago. I remember when I came the first time in the gym and uh, there were like broken glass and everything. It was like a big shock for me. But uh, playing wise, and my first coach, uh, Diamantopoulos, also playing with Yorgos in Papago, really liked it. And uh, yeah, I stayed back then for another two years in, uh, in Athens. Have you, been, have you been teammates with Michali Sifantis and Anthony yes. Bell? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Anthony Pell. And also uh, Mikey Moore. And, uh, Mikey yes. Moore, uh, Joros Diamandopoulos, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a youngster back then. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I uh, remember. What was the atmosphere like in the club? Excuse me? What was the atmosphere uh, like in the club? I mean, the atmosphere was great, you know. I mean, first of all, it was tough uh, back then for my, uh, my, my girlfriend. Also uh, going first time abroad, now as my wife. But uh, we really liked the city, Athens. It was uh, very nice. And uh, the atmosphere was great. I mean, uh, I remember 
meeting with uh, coach Diamantopoulos the first time. But, uh, you know, we understood. I mean, he liked me from the first day, even though his English back then wasn't, wasn't perfect. But uh, we found somehow a way to communicate. And uh, I really liked, you know, being around coach and my teammates. It was a great time. Very well, very well. Uh, I remember, this is my personal experience. I remember a game, Panionios Papagu, back then. You were playing, Anthony Pell was playing, and Youngster Diamantopoulos was playing. And Panionios was a pretty good team. Okay, yes. but Papagu was this year very, very good also. And you and Anthony Pell were impressive in this game. <laughs> so you, you destroyed us. Okay, but I was very, very happy as a child of years old, I was very happy to see foreign players who, who were really, really good. Mm-hmm. Because nowadays, maybe foreign players are not so good. Maybe the teams don't have that strong of a budget. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the foreign players are not very good. But back then, it was a very good league and a very good Panionios and, of course, your team, Papago. Yes, okay. for sure. I mean, I mean, back then, like the, like the players and the names, you know, also like the Americans that played in the big teams with uh, Olympiakos and uh, Panathinaikos. I mean, the Americans, you know, Dominic Wilkins and uh, Eddie Johnson and all these guys. Yes. I think is a, is a big difference also to the foreign players that you see now. I mean, there's, there's a couple ones, of course, in the top teams with the uh, top Americans or top foreigners and big names. But I think back then, 20 years ago, Uh, also, uh, the so-called smaller teams had uh, yeah, bigger names. Correct, correct. Um, a year after, you go to Panionios. Yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, talk about this experience. I think Neas Mirny and Papagu are similar places. I mean, they're quite suburbs. They're not in the center of Athens. Okay. And they were... I think the lifestyle maybe was similar. Talk to me about that. Yes, this was uh, actually, I mean, I played very well with uh, Papago. Uh, and Pan- me was uh, kind of the next step in the career. Improvement. Yes, yes. Improvement. yes. Like next right. step. But in Panionios, you know, like the, the roster was uh, much better, much better. Because in Papago, I had my, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes playing time. Mm-hmm. Not too much of... Uh, Uh, very good players next to me, and in Panionios back then with uh, Rod Sellers and uh, Dusan Jelic, you know, like uh, on my position, was like uh, very good players, and uh, it was kind of tough for me back then to uh, get the minutes that I had played before. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think the team did good overall. You know, we had uh, also uh, Diamantopoulos was there, Marius Batis, and uh, Chris Gent. You know, like a like a very very good team. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me personally, it wasn't, let's say, uh, what I expected. Yeah, the, uh, the team did well, but for me personally, I didn't get the minutes that I expected to get. Okay, is this why you immediately left next season for Daphne? Yes, because uh, back then uh, there was the chance to, to go to Daphne again with a good contract, with good good minutes. Yeah, also with uh, good foreigners next to me, with uh, Buck Johnson and uh, uh, Blue Edwards, <laughs> Blue Ed- and, uh, Gaga Ludis and like all these guys, you know, it was a good team. <laughs> and uh, we played like a great season there. And with, the uh, younger Dinos like, Agilidis. Yes, with Dinos, you know, good friend of mine, you know, Dinos was there too. Really? And uh, it was, uh, again, like a great experience there uh, back then. Uh, I think Daphne, you know, you know, we did, we did good. And uh, Gagaludis, Gagaludis is so crazy about basketball, and he plays still. I don't know if you have contact with him or if you, if you just know about that. He still plays. He still Mike, plays. Where, do, where does he play? Marus Alpha uh, Dio, the second division, not the. Uh, the se- second division, yeah. Uh, which team? Eh? Okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, and. Daphne at that time had a very strong chairman, Mr. Givelekas. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Who was a very strong businessman of the re- of his uh, municipality. And crazy about basketball. And crazy yes. about basketball. Yes, yes. Right, yes. right. Okay. 
continue, continue. What no. about the next step? You leave from Greece in 2001, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this was then, uh, there was some rumors, you know, because I played very well with uh, Daphne. And uh, there were some rumors that now for me, let's say, uh, there's like the, the, the next step, you know, uh, there was shortly talks about could be a chance also to sign with one of the big, of the two big teams. Yeah, that's why uh, I didn't take any other offer because uh, Daphne wanted to uh, re-sign me for the next year. We had uh, Dirk Bauermann, you know, who was uh, also before trying to sign me. Yes. And uh, I didn't sign with Daphne because I wanted to take a shot for the two big teams. Uh, that didn't work out. And uh, I was with my wife and my daughter. We were li living in, uh, in, uh, in Glifada back then. That wasn't bad at all. But uh, there was no really uh, a good chance, you know, to, uh, to sign in Greece because the plan was to stay. And then uh, I had a chance to, uh, I got a call from uh, Coach Pesic to sign in uh, Cologne. And I signed a contract to play for uh, Coach Svetislav Pesic in uh, Cologne. Okay. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, in 2002, you uh, you conquered the FIBA yes. Europe Challenge Cup or something like that. Uh, 2002, we had with the uh, national team, we uh, won the bronze medal. The bronze okay. medal Afterwards, in Indianapolis. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. this was uh, the third place in the USA in the World Championship. Yes. How was the feeling for you uh, representing your country? Because, I mean, you, you were third in the world mm. in a crazy world championships where yes. Amer America uh, played at home and they didn't uh, didn't win anything. Uh, you met Argentina uh, yes. in the semifinals or, or no? Yes, I... yes, yes, yes. Yes, we lost to Argentina. It was, uh, I mean, very, very strong team. And, I, yes, it was uh, very, very tough, you know. Like... And then Argentina lost from uh, Serbia in... Ser In, in overtime, in overtime. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Where Divac, like Divac, I, Divac made the crazy traveling mistake, but Pitilkas, Pitilkas, the Greek referee, didn't see it. And everybody yes. uh, said mm -hmm. that it is because the Greek-Serbian friendship, <laughs> but it was not the case. The guy just didn't see it. Okay, what was your feelings during the tournament in Indianapolis? I mean... It, You saw from the beginning that you were going somewhere high, or it was uh, each game every time. I mean, for us, it was like a process, you know, like the game before, uh, the year before, in the uh, European Championship. Uh, for sure, you remember, we played in the semi-final against Turkey, and we were up uh, three points, and uh, Türkoglu had this uh, buzzer beater to go to overtime, and we lost in overtime to Turkey. Mm -hmm. Then the next day we lost uh, the bronze medal match against Spain. And uh, then one year later, you know, for us, you know, I remember Marco Pesic, uh, like before the World Championship started, there was an uh, interview and he said that uh, the Germans, you know, we are going to the USA to become world champ. And this was uh, our, our mentality, not only for Marco and... Uh, We just felt that it's time for us, you know, for this group to win something. And uh, also, after this uh, big disappointment in the semifinal, you know, we didn't cry too much because we said, okay, we don't want to come back in the situation like the year before that we are not 100% ready to, uh, to win a medal. You know, that's why we only a couple minutes after the loss to Argentina and we just got ready to play uh, New Zealand the next day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we beat them. Pero Cameron. Pero Cameron. Pero Cameron, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, it was great. I mean, playing for Germany, of course, is, uh, is an honor, you know, to represent your country. But also, like, uh, all the players, you know, back then, you know, we are, like, like uh, uh, big friends. Yeah, also with the coaches, yeah, with the, with the coaching staff. I mean, everybody, the doctors, the physical therapists. It was like a group of 15, 20 people that we're working for such a long time together. And I'm very happy, you know, that uh, we had the chance to win something. And this went on, I believe, till 2006 or 2007, something like this. And in 2005, <laughs> we played against each other in Belgrade. Yes. Okay, in the, in the European Championships. Yes. Uh, what, what was the feeling before this game? I mean, you uh, beat Spain. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we beat France in two thrillers, two very yes. close close mm -hmm. matches. No, okay. Ritsky scored a crazy shot. Uh, yes, against uh, uh, no, the towards, towards the end. Yes. yes, yes. So, were you uh, mentally strong before the game against Greece? I mean, it was a strong and very tough game in the semi-final. How does a player handle such a situation? I mean, you know, our history with uh, Greece, our experience with with Greece was uh, actually pretty good, you know, because uh, we played in the past uh, very good. I mean, mm -hmm. Greece, I mean, unbelievable team. You know, if you look at the players now, uh, 15 years later, I mean, legends with uh, Papa Lucas and uh, Diamantidis and Fotsis and I mean, <laughs> Lazarus Papadopoulos. All of them. So on, All so on, so on. I mean, they were pretty. They were pretty young back then. Yeah, but nobody but believed still, that Greece. Only Katiusis, Katiusis only said, we are going to be number one. And everybody was mocking him. Yes, but, uh, you know, like, like for us, it was like we were pretty confident, you know, to, to, uh, to beat Greece in the, in the final. And uh, now, uh, this 15 years later, I think uh, probably too confident, you know, some people too confident, you mm -hmm. know, to, to win. And then uh, the game, uh, obviously, if you look at, you have to respect that uh, that day, you know, Greece was better. I remember, you know, the ball was going to the, to Diamantidis and he was just passing, you know, out of the low post. I remember one of the first really tall point guards and uh, that was tough for us, you know, with uh, our our small guards, with uh, Mita Demirel and Pascal Rolla. It was tough, you know, to play Greece and uh, Greece was better that day, unfortunately. Uh, what is your... What a game that you would like to play again? Would that be the final against Greece or the semi-finals in uh, Indianapolis? If you had one chance, for sure the Greek, uh, uh, the Greek team for the championship. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I think this uh, this uh, Argentina team was like uh, incredible strong. You know, it was very very strong. Yes, such a generation. Okay. Uh, let's talk about coaching. Yes. Uh, you cooperated with uh, Coach Bartokas about four or five years. What was he like? Yes, I mean, uh, first time we met, I didn't even know that uh, this was also his first year coaching when uh, I met him first first uh, year in uh, Larissa. And uh, I heard that he was assistant coaching from uh, Yanakis, right, in Marusi? Yes, right. yes, yeah. yes. But uh, obviously, I mean, back then, very talented, very structured. It was uh, some new things for me because before that, I don't want to say it was wild, but uh, we had more freedom. And with uh, Coach Badzokas, everything was structured. Yeah? And that was impressing me, like uh, the way he uh, approached the game and uh, obviously, the way he was uh, coaching us was very successful. Yeah, like in the first and the second year. In the third year, we had some uh, some financial problems, so the the, uh, the focus wasn't there 100% on basketball. But definitely, like the first two years, with I think uh, a team that was not great. I mean, we had a good team, very yeah, good. But team. Uh, with that team, you know, going to the playoffs and playing that well, also uh, having games against Olympiakos and uh, Panathinaikos, close games. Yeah, back then, Ike, I think uh, he did a, a great job and uh, it was just normal that he is uh, yeah, continuing to getting better and to get where he is right now. Yes. Mike, uh, we were talking about their team, Olympia, uh, having also met Walsh. Yes. Uh, Jorgos Prindersis uh, yes. from the first year. Yes. From the first year. Okay. He was on loan. Yes. Mm -hmm. On loan from Olympiacos. On loan from Olympiacos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, and Matt Walsh yeah, was Matt, a, a deadly a An deadly amazing sniper. scorer. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, okay. How was your experience? So, and, and Fanis Kumburas, and Fanis Kumburas. Yes, Fanis was there, and, uh, and Ciaras. Uh, he's still playing, Fanis. Kumburas, Kumburas Fanis is still playing, playing. yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay, how was the feeling for you and your family living outside of Athens. It was your only years 
not in Athens, in Larissa. Larissa, for the people who don't know, is a city of maybe 200,000 people, okay? But still, it isn't the capital city. Mm -hmm. Okay, how was it like for you? I mean, for me, it was always like uh, I was telling people when uh, when friends are te uh, telling me that they couldn't live there and couldn't live here and there, there. For me, it was always, you know, when my family was with me, yeah, my my wife and the kids, when they are with me, I was happy, you know, it because is actually, is enough. because actually for me, it was basketball and uh, going home and, and, and eat family. So for me, uh, it didn't really matter, you know, you know, where I was, but uh I mean, Larissa was a, a smaller city for sure, but uh, yeah, definitely much hotter. Place. Much hotter. Say again. Very, very hot. Very hot. Very hot. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, definitely a place, you know, you know, you know, where you could live. Uh, there was a nice platia, you know, for the coffee. It's like a big, a big platia, and also yeah, it's like always uh, a nice platia for the coffee. coffee all, all day long. Nice platia. <laughs> yes, and also, if I remember right, the way if we had a day off like on the weekend or something. I think it was called uh, Agio Campos. Agio like, Campos. Uh, yes. Agio Campos, bravo. Yes, it was also maybe, like a uh, nice, you know, to maybe, go. Maybe a little further, maybe Platamonas. Platamonas, Caterini, yes, yes, yes. A yes. nice beach. Yes, I remember, okay. yes. Everywhere, everywhere is okay in Greece. Yes, I for mean. sure. I mean, yes, it, it was, it was uh, nice to live, yes. Okay, and your final year as a player was at Marusi. You come back in Athens, and you go to Marusi. Yes. Okay. But you played a little more. I, I, yes. I yes, yes, yes. I mean, when I when I left from uh, from Larissa, I mean, the first two years were great. Yeah, mm -hmm. the first two years were great with coach, with the teammates. Was everything was good. The third year was uh, something that I mean, I was five years there. I actually didn't have uh, big problems, you know, with uh, getting money and you know, with uh, the clubs. But uh, the third year in uh, Larissa was very bad from uh, the president there, you know, like he didn't pay the players. God. With, okay, with the president. Them, and uh, I said, actually, I will never come back to Greece after that six years, although like really loving it. <laughs> you yeah. go back in Greece immediately. But, uh, when uh, Badzokas called me and he said that uh, he wants me on his team because I know his philosophy and it was clear that I'm not going to play a lot of minutes. I was uh, 37 years old, but uh, he just wanted to me also to be a locker room guy. And, a glue uh, guy, glue yeah, guy. Glue guy, yes, because I knew his philosophy and uh, I think uh, I did my job also with uh, less playing time to help the team. Do you, do you miss playing basketball or coaching is satisfying enough? I don't miss the practices. I don't miss... Uh, uh, let's say uh, the pain after the practice, of and uh, of course, I mean, uh, after the career, you know, we had some uh, some friends, you know, like in Berlin, we played some uh, some games. But uh, right now, I'm not missing it at all because, uh, like, coaching is something different. Uh, but I would say, if you are a player, play as long as you can, because uh, I think it's like like the best time of your life because coaching is so different, because now it's not only you, you have to think about so many things, you know, it's about pressure, yes. you know, this player, this player, you have to, you know, the president, the club, and the, the, uh, also the fans and the media, I mean, the so many the things. President, the president is always the problem because he has the money. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean, so many things as a coach you have to worry about and to take care of. So if you are a player, play as long as you can. I can't remember the name of uh, the Lysa's uh, president. Uh, Malakos. Malakos. Ma Malakos, man. Malakos. Okay, okay. Talk to us about your time together with Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, how does a player become so great? In my opinion, and in Mike's opinion, he is the best European of all time. Of course. And it's not a compliment because you are German. We really believe that he is the best, uh, best European of all time. How do you become the best European of all time? I mean, he was relatively slow. He didn't jump so high. Mm -hmm. How does he become so legendary of a player? I mean, of course, you know, he was uh, obviously uh, pretty talented, 
this is one thing. Like you said, not not gifted, you know, with uh, the length of uh, athletic Tukumbu. athletic ability. Athletic wise, you know, if you compare him to uh, Aru Tukumbu, it's different. But I think the work ethic. I mean, he was he was working so hard, you know, like hard. I mean, being in the gym like a real gym rat. Yeah, and uh, I remember, I remember training camps where we had hard practices, you know, like three hours in the gym. Everybody was dead. Everybody was tired. You know, just wanted to go home and sleep. And the coach came and uh, said, "Okay, tomorrow morning, it's an optional practice. Yeah, so if anyone wants to come, please uh, raise your hand." And you look around, and nobody was raising his hand. And uh, then Dirk was raising his hand. And then we said, "Oh Lord, I mean, if Dirk, who's the best player right now in the world, everybody has to go morning in the gym, how can we not go? Everybody has to go. And this yes, was the yes. mentality. I mean, he was." Working so hard, and uh, that's how he became who he is. Of course, I will always. I will always. Sorry, I will always remember a story about Drazen Petrovic. Yes. He denied going home if he didn't score 500 three pointers in each and every practice. Yes. Mm. This shows a lot about the work ethic of some players, of some people. It's not about basketball. It's about yeah. your life, your determination. Okay, yes. so one last question. We are very happy that you have uh, been speaking with us. How is Budapest? Many people say that it is maybe the most beautiful city in Europe. I want your opinion about this. Yes, for me it was like uh, we traveled here with the national team, but obviously when you go somewhere with the national team, then uh, you just come, <laughs> you go to the hotel, you go to practice, you play your game and next morning you leave. So I didn't really know what to expect here, but uh, I was very surprised, uh, positive way, in a positive way, mm -hmm. because like you said, it's a, it's a beautiful city, beautiful city, you know, with the Danube River, like the city and uh, lifestyle. I mean, very nice. I mean, if you have time, you can really enjoy Budapest. I'm very, I'm very uh, near Budapest. I live in Bosnia. Okay. Really Really close, really close to Serbia, to Belgrade, and Belgrade from Budapest is four maybe hours. three, three hours. Four. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, so it's. A I mean, city. it's like like uh, really nice, you know, really nice city. And uh, if you have time, I mean, going down in the city, having a coffee. Uh, I found a little uh, a Greek place, and uh, actually, I can get my uh, Fredo cappuccino and Fredo espresso. Uh, uh, I can get That's over there. The best. He's getting his meat. He's getting his meat from, uh, I think, Metsovo, you know, oh, so and the cheese and the okay, cheese from Metsovo. Okay. So it's a good place to go there. Okay. okay. That is fantastic. Metsovo meat. Yes, yes, yes. We everybody know what this is and <laughs> how delicious that is. Mike, mm -hmm. do you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay. What about Novitski? I don't think so. Coach, thank you very much. You have been very helpful, very polite to us, and it was a pleasure that we spoke with you. Thank you very Thank much. You having me. Thank you for having me. And all the best to Greece, and take care. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. Okay.